I like the Parivar chit chat, sweet conversations that overflow with insights and inspirations. So I would like to invite our dear brother, brother Eric. We welcome you to Inspiration Hall in Peace Village. So welcome. Hello, I'm Shanti. Good evening, Peace Village. The lovely, sweet family of Yakti Parivar and Om Shanti, dear Smoini Didi. Where am I? Am I on the stage with you? Am I in front of you or behind you or all around you? <laughs> so I also brought my wings of zeal and enthusiasm. And I think you will like them very, very much, Sister Moini. They're very sweet wings of zeal and enthusiasm. See? So you were talking about mangoes, but mangoes, if you have two mangoes, it's like yeah, quite big size mango. <laughs> so to each and every one, beautiful, fresh mangoes, there's enough for everyone, at least two each, not just one each, but two each. So I was enjoying my Nididi, the uh all these Avyakti Kumari and the Avyakti uh, Kumar, I was feeling as if there were um, pictures of daddies in their young age. One looked like Mama, one looked like Daddy Janki, one looked like you in young age. And I thought they have daddy's power. And in the brothers, I think one looked like young Jagdish Bai, <laughs> one looked like young Nirvar Bai. <laughs> it's beautiful family pictures. And I felt they're all back. <laughs> all the daddies and dadas are coming back to us. So congratulations to Kumaris and Kumars. So we have little time, Wendy Didi, but I thought we can talk about a little bit sorrow, but mostly about happiness. Last week, I uh, didn't take that question because we we're doing something special. But there was a, oh, so you didn't see the mango. Moini Didi. Did you see it? She saw it. Okay. Right here. <laughs> so there was a, um, a question, very interesting question. And I know yesterday you talked about also, you know, the pain or the sorrow, the mercy that we should feel for people in the world. And so someone sent a very interesting question last week. And I thought maybe we can take it up tonight. So the question is the following one. She says, the topic about emotions is delicate. As many Brahmins have been dealing with sadness and losing close ones, and some are very ill, but when they open the hearts, when they open their hearts to express it, it is important to validate it and not to suppress it. So how to talk about it in an open way, not using gyan to suppress it, but to heal it. Is that okay, or should I repeat the question? So it's important to validate when many Brahmins go through, you know, they lose their parents, their brothers, sisters, or they go through a serious illness. You mentioned about the daddies not feeling the pain will come to that in the second question. So when people feel a little bit sad, how can they express it and validate it and not suppress it? So how to talk about it in an open way, not using yang to suppress it, but to heal it? I thought it was an interesting question. Om <laughs> Shanti. I think uh, it is very, very important that if there is anything which has hurt you or hurting you, you should speak about it. And what I find that while listening, I always keep Baba in between. And I saying to Baba, Baba, are you listening? 
And of course, I keep my state of mind of pure love for that soul and sympathy and sakash. And so while that soul is speaking, I feel at least I would allow everyone to say whatever one has to say, because it happened last month that I was not there at Harmony House, so someone called and talked about uh, someone left body or but she was crying. So sister said, first you stop crying, then talk to me. So she didn't like, of course, right? So she turned off and then she called me. So she kept crying, keep saying it. And I said, it, she has to do that because if she doesn't do that, then pain will remain. And that pain will affect the body or somewhere. Because in India, I remember that when someone leaves body, you know, so they always say that what if when someone has to cry, let that soul cry as much possible, because then it will be somewhere deeply, the relief will be there. So I think we have to allow to be, you know, to express, it's very important, but keep Baba there, create presence of Baba. And also your good feelings, sympathy, your love or mercy, all combination of all pure feelings, I think definitely help to remove the sorrow of that soul. And then mostly people say, I feel so light now. I feel the relief. I feel my pain is gone. So I think we have to help souls to let them express and then we give power to their soul. So their soul is healed properly. Don't so stay, don't about, lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what about the, the soul who feels the sorrow or the pain? What would you say to them in terms of how to deal with it? If there is a little bit sorrow or pain because of any reason and you are Brahmin, how not to use knowledge to deny it or to suppress it? No, because they have to see what any soul, whether soul has gone or the soul in the body, they, they want to experience this kind of love, you know, and belonging that, or care or, you know, like we sympathize. And so our, these emotions can help that soul one who is experiencing pain to feel the relief, no? So you so we are creating, we should express it, we should express creating, it. Uh, yes. What do you do? <laughs> I don't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have it. If anyone not, comes. Not, not. I've been, you know, I was um, thinking, I think I've been practicing in my mind many long time. What will I feel if someone I love very much, my sisters or, you know, my close friends, whoever leave their body, how would I process the reaction? So I think for me, I found it was important to practice beforehand. So I know how to, but I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I will still feel pain and sorrow, of course, when it happens. But I like the idea that sometimes, I think as a Brahmin, we may feel ashamed of feeling the pain or the sorrow, or we may feel bad about, you know, we have been told so many times, don't cry. And Baba has been saying in the Merli so many times, you should never cry. <laughs> and so, then you feel that if you're crying, you're not following Srimad. <laughs> and so I prepared halva. I have halva ready, always. <laughs> you should just have halva ready. And it's good to eat halva, okay. but, um, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know what to do. It, it depends, you know. If you have tears, you have. It's all right. Don't feel... I mean, I have seen some of those who were very close to Dadi, they were serving. So we allowed them, you know, if they had tears, it's all right. And that I know that when 
my three sisters and brother they left body within a year i well they became angel now so they will be with me in an angelic form so i always from very beginning i don't deny like if suddenly i remember one of my lokic sister i don't feel bad why i just say oh angel you are here okay you are an angel you know i talk like an angel i see them as angel and i do feel their presence once in a while because i am the youngest so they used to always care for me but now they are in the angelic form so there my be a stage comes where you don't feel sorrow but you immediately change your relationship with those souls as as angels like with brahma baba we did and that's what my experience is you mentioned yesterday also that you know the daddies although the body was going through a lot they were not feeling sorrow or pain because they settled their karmic accounts and i was wondering do we need to wait until we finish settling all the accounts to not feel pain or sorrow or do you think that we can also change sorrow or pain or even little sometimes little sadness and just increase happiness voluntarily you know through our conscience through our mind and just create that happiness not just waiting for the karmic account to be settled i think what i was talking body the stage was uh, physical pain i was not talking of emotional pain mm. talking about that they will not feel they were not feeling pain in the body you know like one of the procedure was being done where they had to put the food pipe you know from the neck so it's quite a big hole they make so while they were doing it then one of the senior brother was asking dadi prakash pari dadi you feeling pain dadi said no we were looking at what they doing to her body we were feeling pain in the sense of oh it's so painful but she said no i'm not feeling pain so that means their body less stage and their stage was such that their body is not feeling pain you know of course emotionally they want that they were far from that stage but i am talking here of physical pain also so we don't wait but every day we are settling you no know, through remembrance and going through certain things so every day we are settling and a time comes we have settled all our karmic accounts bondages of karma sinful actions whatever we have done so we don't wait but every day we are settling right and i like when baba says that whenever there is something physical just remember i am settling and i remember that um, nirvan bhai you know last year two years he went to hospital so many times so last time when he went the surgery which he was doing and i keep saying no please you if you don't need it don't do it because you know another another extra part in the body means more risk of infections and she he decided he will do it and he did it and then he came and it was a really long time to recover and he was laughing and i said never by your trip to hospital so so often he said but i now said and no i will serve so much confidence and i was kind of amazed and then inspired too that you deep within whatever is happening if we feel we are settling so you won't be battling or you won't be suffering from that too. so even this pure thought that i am settling could also help the souls that's what i have heard about from many but there's also the feeling i think that now we're going to talk about zeal and enthusiasm we're also focusing on golden age so i think this is time now to get ready i feel like this is uh this is it you know we have to pack up and uh, nom shanti get our little crowns and jewelry ready and you know go to get ready for golden age 
So I think the topic zeal and enthusiasm, golden age combined, could encourage us to, to realize also that yes, there is settling, there is old karmic accounts, but the feeling I had was, is happiness not something I can create more and more and stop thinking about settling and past and karmic account and just invest in happiness more and more and raise happiness consciously. I was just thinking, you know, if I, I was catching myself, I was walking in the park and I said, yeah, I'm okay. Am I really happy, happy? And it says, no, can make me happy. Okay, and then I became more happy. <laughs> So maybe we need to keep increasing happiness, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very good idea. So enthusiasm is increasing more happiness, right? So that's what everyone will do. There are so many sitting here. Yes, that's what we will do. Yes, increase happiness. We will do that. Because you mentioned... So uh, because when we are, we are settling, is so we are increasing happiness, no? Because we will be more and more happy, more and more light, right? This is Peaceful Age uh, audience in front. I know, they all look like uh, living mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> they look like beautiful living mangoes. They look like mine here. <laughs> They're radiant and uh, fresh. <laughs> if you are tempting everyone, we can't get now mango for everyone. Just look at this one. Yeah, you have to... You have to send it from Montreal. <laughs> if you send tomorrow morning, we will get by afternoon. <laughs> I'll come and deliver them myself. <laughs> anyway, just to conclude, I, I was thinking that, um, you know, the feeling is always that when Baba was asking you in a book message Thursday, are you always close? Or are you sometimes a little bit distant? And something like that. I felt, you know, you were mentioning that if there is a little bit of sadness, it will take the soul away from Baba. And I was thinking that actually sad in a sense, like not being very happy. And if we're not very happy, there's a danger that we're going a little bit further away. So for me, it was a very good motivation to be more happy knowing I will be closer to Baba. Does it work that way? If you're more happy, you, you click more with Baba. He likes happy soul. No, he doesn't like sad BKs, maybe. One thing I have, even before coming to Gyan, I have always smilingly gone to God, always, always, because I feel that it's not possible I am not smiling in front of my father who gives everything to me. Honestly, never, never. And second thing, I never ask him anything because I know that he knows and uh, one gets as, as you deserve and you become worthy. He will give you more, not less. But definitely each one of us, I always say, how can you be not cheerful in front of Baba? And we are always in front of Baba. Is there anyone here who is not cheerful we can't see? They're all wearing masks, right? <laughs> but you can hear them laugh. <laughs> so that's true because I believe always, always be very cheerful when you go in front of God, right? So that he can bless you and say, remain cheerful forever. To receive blessing, you have to go very, very happy and cheerful in front of Baba which I always do, always. Looking at Baba, you smile, but you go smilingly to Baba. You can call it inner cheerfulness or happiness important to go in front of Baba. But some said, if I am not, how can I pretend? I say, even you pretend, you will be happy <laughs> because you will find that Baba's blessings will help you to be cheerful. Right. <laughs> very good. Thank you. I think we should create masks with a big smile, you know, which would be very nice <laughs> to put a big smile on the mask. Thank you. I feel that also, Mani Didi, not only we want to come to Baba cheerful, but I feel now when 
we all come in front of you. I think everyone in front of you, if they were not wearing the mask, they also feel cheerful. Mm -hmm. So I think that the daddies, the DDs have also brought that speciality that when we come to you, we want to smile as well. So thank you for, there's a beautiful song. You know, it says, who has, who has taught me to smile? So mm -hmm. I think we know how Baba has been teaching us everything, including smiling. So thank you, thank you. And now we have a little yoga again. So big Om Shanti to everyone in, uh, you know, this beautiful gathering in Peace Village. And Om Shanti, so Eric, I, do you want to ask something to our Peace Village audience? To everyone, to everyone on Avyakti Park. There are hundreds no, and hundreds. Especially in Peace Village. Yeah, I feel I'm part of this gathering in Peace Village, close. <laughs> do you want to ask them something? To ask them? Uh-huh, that interview. Uh, to ask uh, those in uh, Peace Village, do you all feel like a juicy mango ready for golden age? <laughs> check your pulse, check your pulse, and make sure you're juicy and ripe like a mango because golden age is coming. So if anyone is not ripe and juicy, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it seems you really like your mangoes. <laughs> That you comparing us with mangoes. If I'm if I were to have a Hindi name, I think I will be called Am Bai. Am Bai. <laughs> Mango Bai. We do have Amar Ben, but not Am. Here comes Am is Mango, right? Mango Bai. Anyway. Thank you. Oh, you see? Yes. <laughs> and you know, these mangoes are very nice ones, right? right? They have been offered to Baba. They have been offered to Baba. Not yet, so we can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> because they say you cannot smell, but they look very nice mangoes. Honestly, they like, you know, Alfenza from Bombay. Mm. Right. It's very nice. So everyone will get tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay, so there are four tolis today. Desh toli. Kisko? Oh. Aoyakti <laughs> Parivara. Yeah, and also we brought uh, Madhuban toli. Sindhi Halwa. Tomorrow morning you get. Toli will be for tomorrow morning, right? It's the time. There is also basin toli, right? And also mango. Right? <laughs> okay, let's remember Baba. Not mango, but ma Baba. Thank <laughs> you.